The Israeli desert is alive and blooming with innovation as it brings together people from all over the world with the hope that they can help mankind take the next giant leap. If you watch the Earth from space, you don't see any borders. So when we go to Mars, we don't necessarily go with as Austrians or Israeli, we go as humans, as a society. It's all about international collaboration. Today we have a truly special story for you. Six astronauts conducting science experiments, spacewalks, mental and physical training, right here on the surface of Mars. I mean the Negev Desert. This is the Ramon Crater, a unique geological phenomenon and the biggest of its kind in the world. Its extreme conditions resemble the surface of Mars, making it the perfect place for an analog Mars habitat simulation. This is an effort to shape the future of space in Israel. I met up with Itai Levi, the director of the project, to get an insider's look of this remarkable project. We have the resources, we have the environment, we have mm -hmm. the desert and the Ramon Crater, which is... Which is as close as you get to being in space on Earth, yeah. Exactly. For sure. But this is an opportunity, and mm -hmm. this is us seeking that opportunity and looking to make it into the real life of Israel space industry and research. Five, four... Today marked the end of a successful simulation. After three weeks of being locked away from civilization, the six astronauts who were training in the simulation greeted the world for the first time. It's like a dress rehearsal. That's exactly right. This mission is a partnership, is a joint venture by the Israeli Space Agency and the Austrian Space Forum. We invited researchers from all over the world. These are over two dozen countries. This is a Mars-like area which is unparalleled on this planet. So our concept is that we here implement a complex Mars analog station that is able to mimic all the limitations and opportunities an actual station would have on Mars as well. Mm -hmm. It includes spacesuit simulators, rovers, uh, helicopters. Basically, the full range of tool sets we need to explore Mars and maybe look there for traces of life. Now it was time to take a tour of the facility and see just how it all works. This is the type of facility we might see one day on Mars. So this is the, uh, the science section where some of the experiments have been conducted. All the telemetry from the spacesuits is being transmitted via satellite to the mission support center in Austria. We're going to take you to the, uh, the social section, so to say. The analog astronauts have to cook, clean, sleep, talk, and so on. Because after all, they're humans, they have a social life as well. So this, each one of these cubicles, this That's was sort of like the same on a submarine, I guess. Absolutely. So this is the most home. private you'll get. This mission lasted only a month, but future researchers would have to stay... Years. Years. So really working out the details suddenly becomes very important. Mars is an unforgiving place, and so every mistake we make here on Earth, we are grateful for, because for every mistake, we can change and evolve our technology and not repeat the mistake of Mars when it's too late. We always talk in Israel about the fact that the desert tests your fortitude as an individual. Mm -hmm. I don't think I or anyone ever imagined that it would test people's ability to get to Mars. 40 years in the desert to reach the land of Israel, but uh, it's uh, <laughs> three a few weeks, longer. Three yeah, weeks, two weeks, it's, 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 it's a stepping stone. <laughs> yeah. After seeing the habitat, I wanted to hear firsthand about the experience of living there. So Anika, you just came out of three weeks in this tiny habitat behind us, and you're still smiling and happy. It definitely was a positive experience, yes. Um, mm. Work with so many different people from all nationalities for a common goal, and it's a really, really nice experience. Of course, um, there's different points of view, there's maybe little conflicts, but uh, being able to mm -hmm. overcome those and to work together, yeah, happy with the experience and the results. The Israeli desert is alive and blooming with innovation as it brings together people from all over the world with the hope that they can help mankind take the next giant leap. If you watch the Earth from space, you don't see any borders. So when we go to Mars, we don't necessarily go with as Austrians or Israeli, we go as humans, as a society. It's all about international collaboration. Shalom. Today we have the great honor to have with us Professor Shamovitz. 
is the president of Ben Gurion University, Professor Shamovitz, Daniel. Danny, please. Danny, great honor having you with Thanks, us. Thanks, Wally. Can you tell us about yourself first? I grew up in a small town in Western Pennsylvania. I had a very strong Jewish identity. And so after high school, I took a gap year um, and spent a year in Israel. And I was a half a year on a kibbutz in the Southern Negev, Kibbutz Keturah. Ah, wow. And I can almost remember the day I was driving a tractor in the alfalfa fields of Kibbutz Keturah. And I, have you ever driven a tractor? Yes. You have a lot of time to think when you're on the tractor. And I had this eureka, literally a eureka moment with the sun coming down and coming up, up over the, the hills of Edom there in the, mm. over the Jordan. If we could figure out why alfalfa grows back and wheat doesn't, we could feed the world. Mm. And at that moment, I stopped being pre-med and went to be pre-ag. Always in the back of my mind, was this idea, how are we going to feed the world? Tell us a bit about the Ben-Gurion University. Ben-Gurion University of the Negev was founded in the vision of David Ben-Gurion. In 1963, Ben-Gurion said, I envision that scholars and researchers will sit in the gates of the Negev, sort of like Abraham. Abraham, yeah. Uncover its secrets of the desert, how to make energy from the sun, water from the air, and food from the sands, to take advantage of resources that are until now going to waste. Hmm. Yeah, over 50 years ago. You know, who was thinking of these things? A real visionary. A real visionary. And at the time, we even had to fly professors in, fly, because there was almost no roads. But over the past 52 years, we've now grown into Israel's third largest university, 20,000 students, three campuses. What seemed like a dream over 50 years ago is this reality where the world is now coming to us to learn how we not only survive in the desert, mm -hmm. but how we thrive in the desert. Mm -hmm. Do you think that the university and Israel in large can be a help to our neighbors? Not only can we be a help for our neighbors, we are a help for our neighbors. Next week I'm going to Dubai, wow. where I was invited to give a lecture on food security from the desert. Almost all of the water from the Sea of Galilee, where does it go to today? It goes to Jordan. We export it to Jordan. Unbelievable. <laughs> Why can we export the water to Jordan? because we now generate all the water we need through desalination. Where was water first desalinated in Israel? At Ben Gurion University of the Negev. We often use the term, a light unto the nations. Israel is a light unto the nations. Mm -hmm. When you see what we've done over the past 50 years at Ben Gurion University, it truly, it is a miracle. Mm -hmm. But we have an obligation that this is not our richness. This is not our wealth. We don't own technology. We don't own knowledge. Mm -hmm. We're custodians. Beautiful. And that's what we're doing. Professor Shamovitz, what a great honor. Thank, thank you for being you. with Thanks us. Thanks for having me. Happy to be back. Thank you. Hey, I'm Mati Shoshani, and thank you for watching the TBN Israel YouTube channel. We hope this video gave you greater understanding of Israel and her people. If you haven't already, subscribe to our channel and hit the notification bell so you never miss a video. We'd love to hear from you, so be sure to share what you've learned and ask your questions and comments below. And invite your friends to join the conversation.